brothers and sisters in Islam, on this day of Arafah, tens of thousands of Muslims from all parts of the, of the Muslim world have assembled on the plain of Arafah, all together, having come from far and wide, some on buses, some on trucks, some by train, I think, and certainly some of us by, by the plane. And they have all gathered on this particular day. But before doing so, they stayed in hotels as families, as communities. They spoke to each other. They broke bread. They shared meals. And then they made their way to this day of Arafah, to the plains of Arafah. And then they waited for that glorious moment between Asar and Maghrib Salah when everything changed. When they shifted attention away from others and focused entirely upon themselves. Because at that point in time, that glorious moment in the, the Hajj, the Haji's life, he has to focus entirely and solely upon himself or herself. And in, do, and in doing so, he replicates, so to speak, his ultimate day of reckoning, the ultimate Arafah, when he and she will be standing in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a day of much dread and hope, this day of Arafah for us on this earth is a day of hope. And so we hope as individuals that Allah will forgive us. Everything we do on the day of Arafah, especially between Maghrib and Asar, between Asar and Maghrib, is a reflection of that individuality that Islam not just requires, but it also honors and rewards. On the one hand, Islam is a communal religion. It requires of us, for instance, that we participate in the, the, the day of Jum'ah. Ah. It requires of us that we participate in the Salah. There are severe consequences for those who neglect performing the Salatul, salatul Jum'ah ah in Jama'ah. Ah. Even if they choose to perform their Dhuhr separately, you cannot perform your Hajj individually. But at the end of that day of Arafah, which is the most important day of Hajj, you become the individual. You focus entirely on yourself. Because salvation is individual. It comes to me and it comes to you by way of community. It comes to us by way of involvement in the affairs of the community, in taking upon ourselves the responsibility of the community, in acting on behalf of the community, in representing the community in different arenas. But ultimately, accountability is individual. It is not communal. In Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ farda That they will all come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as individuals. Their reckoning will be as individuals. They should not forget that. They should not forget that especially when they are embroiled in or are sacrificing their time, their pleasure and their money for the sake of the community. Because even that has a price. Two weeks ago, we spoke about the need for us to become involved in the square in this country and in every other country where Muslims reside. This week, we should look at the flip side of that. There are consequences to becoming too embroiled, too involved, too engulfed, by the society in which you want to operate, in which you want to make a difference. And you try and deal with that by saying that I am doing this 
for a greater cause. And certainly that greater cause is commendable. But it should not come at the price of your own salvation. It should not come at the price of your own salvation. Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was part of the army that fought against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Battle of Badr. And then he was captured. And he was taken as a prisoner of war to Medina al Munawwara. And you know, this was ultimately a fraternal war, brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor. These were migrants who had moved away from, Medi from Mecca because their life had become intolerable in Mecca. And they sought sanctuary and were given sanctuary in Medina al Munawwara. This was that war at the Battle of Badr. So they were poking fun at him, mocking him. He says, you know, you, look at you, all tied and bound, a prisoner of war. And so he responds and he says, yes, قَدْ سَبَقْتُمُونَ فِي الْجِهَادِ وَفِي الْهِجْرَةِ لَكِنَّنَا كُنَّا نَسْقِي al Hajij wa Na'mur al Bayt. He says, Certainly, yes. You preceded us. Abbas responding to them. You preceded us in the Hijrah, in migrating from Makkah to Medina. Abbas did not migrate. You preceded us in engaging in battle in the name of Allah. Abbas was obviously fighting on the other side. So he tries to counterbalance that by saying that whilst you were doing that, whilst you were fighting in the path of Allah and believing in Allah, we were providing services to the people who came for Hajj. We took care of the house of Allah. In other words, we engaged in social activity in the public square. To which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then responds, he says, Aja'altum siqayat al-hajji wa imarat al-masjid al-harami kaman amana billahi wal yawm al-akhir la yastawun عند Allah. Are you creating a parity between these two acts? Between engaging, representing the community in public affairs and believing in Allah and the last day, Allah tells us categorically in this verse, the two are not the same. Now clearly this verse is talking to people who on the one side were believers and on the other side were disbelievers. But to some extent, it resonates with our conditions as well. We have amongst us some of the brightest Muslim youth, some of the brightest Muslim minds, individuals, who have plunged neck deep into political life in America, social life in America. And they do so for good reason. They do so in, in the hope that they would be representing Islam and Muslims. They do so in the hope that they would be alleviating the plight of Muslims in this country. And they get lost in the process. They get lost in the process. You become like those you hang out with. This has been a constant refrain of mine for the past weeks. Spend time with people and you will assume their persona, their characteristics, their behavior patterns, and God forbid, their belief system. You had friends and family who left India and Egypt and Pakistan and Malaysia and when they left, they left in the state of Iman. And 10 years later, 20 years later, you meet in the streets of London or New York City, or you happen to be a guest in their home, only to find that they have changed dramatically. They have changed dramatically. They no longer adhere to the beliefs and the practices and the principles that you shared. 
back home. This is the danger we face for getting too involved. At the end of the day, you and I should never forget that we stand on Arafah as individuals. We do not carry the responsibility of other Muslims. We carry the responsibility of conveying the message to them or acting on their behalf. But their ultimate destiny, their ultimate dis destiny depends on them as individuals. وَلَا تَزِرُوا وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَىٰ No soul is made to carry the burden of any other soul. So you have to stop yourself at some point. O oh, you who is involved in public affairs in this country. O oh, you who wants to identify with groups because they are sympathetic to Islam. You have to stop short and say, this is where I draw the line. I am not willing to sacrifice myself. I am not willing to sacrifice my eternal life. Not even for my community. Not this way. Also, when we engage in public affairs, when we move outside the orbit of the community, when we leave home and go to, high school, to, to college, we ought to remember that this salah, this psalm, this zakat, these are the shields that Allah has given us to protect ourselves from the environment, to insulate ourselves to the extent possible, to insulate ourselves to the extent possible from the dirt and the grime that surrounds us. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Your salah will act as a deterrent to the wrongs and the immoralities. But you have to engage in it consistently. You have to embrace it. You have to embrace it. It is not simply because Allah has asked you to pray for him. Allah does not need my salah. Allah does not need your salah. I certainly need my salah. I certainly need my soul. Your fasting that you are engaging right now, may Allah reward you for that. That is your fast. It does not increase, improve, enhance the quality of God's Godhead in any way whatsoever. All of these salahs and ibadat that Allah has instituted has been done with a view to enhancing and enriching your own lives, not anyone else's. And you neglect, you, you neglect them to your detriment, especially if you're engaging in public affairs, if, especially if you want to represent Islam in the public square. That cannot be done without these shields. You have to attend, not, you should not just perform the salah, you should attend the salah in jama'ah, in the masjid. And one of the concerns that I have, at least, we all have markers to determine which way a community is moving, is when I happen, and I'm fortunate in that I have traveled extensively, and I get opportunity to go to masajid, the one thing I look at is the demographics of those who attend the age brackets in which they fall. The younger the age, gra the, the age group, the greater the hope for that community. The younger the age group, the greater the hope for that community. If, if a masjid is filled with people who are two steps removed from the qabr, that bodes very well for them as individuals. It does not bode very well for the community. It does not bode very well for the community. So my plea to you, especially those who are want to engage in public affairs, that you make this a commitment to yourself, that you engage in your ibadah, that you perform your salah in the masjid at least once a day, so that you can establish, strength, strengthen, and consolidate the shield that Allah has provided you in order for you to take on the challenges of tomorrow.